Good evening, everyone. This is your principal, Ms. Monroe, and I'm going to be reading a story for you tonight just in time for Halloween. The story is called Gulia, and I hope you enjoy it. Making friends can be scary if you're a zombie. The residents of Crumbling Manor, Gulia, Auntie Debarded, Tragedy, Shadow, Uncle Misfortune, and Granddad Coffin. Gulia was no ordinary child. She didn't feel particularly different, but compared to other children, the color of her skin was a little odd. She was pale, deathly pale, a greenish gray color. Her eyes were as big and round as ping pong balls with bright purple shadows underneath. Purple was Gulia's favorite color, mine too. Oh, and one last thing, Gulia could pull off parts of her body whenever she wanted, as if they were jigsaw puzzle pieces. Gulia was a zombie, a perfectly normal zombie girl. So to Gulia, her life seemed perfectly normal. She lived in Crumbling Manor with her auntie departed. There were lots of rooms where she could play whatever and whenever she wanted. The manor was surrounded by a huge garden with trees that were perfect for climbing. However, Gulia always made sure not to be spotted by anyone. You can see the nearby village, the creaky steps, Auntie Departed's parlor, the attic full of cobwebs, the haunted west wing. Gulia's best friend, was an albino greyhound named Tragedy, who played with her all day. Nobody was quite sure whether he was dead or alive. At night, he slept at the foot of Gulia's bed. Gulia loved her dog and her house and her family, but there was a big but. The thing that Gulia wanted more than anything else in the world was to make friends with other children in the village but this was absolutely not allowed. Whenever the children played near Crumbling Manor, Gulia spied on them. Sometimes they were curious enough to peer through the manor's gates, but no one had ever been brave enough to enter the grounds. I wonder why, thought Gulia. Auntie to departed had made Gulia promise to never let herself be seen by anyone from the village, especially not by the children. Auntie worried constantly that they would be discovered and chased out of their home. Then where would they go? What would become of them? One morning, Gulia had a brilliant idea. I will disguise myself as a normal living child. She let herself in to Auntie departed bedroom. She borrowed auntie's makeup, brushes, and hairpins. Then she dug out some brighter clothes from the old dusty wardrobe. Finally, Gulia waltzed down the staircase to show off her new look and ask, now can I go and play with the other children? Auntie departed, screamed, and fainted. When she came to, she was furious with her niece. She explained that Gulia looked nothing like a normal child. Once again, Auntie Departed forbade Gulia from setting foot outside the manor. Gulia followed Auntie's rules, and she didn't venture beyond the manor's walls. But one day, while she was spying, she heard the children talking about a night when they would all dress up as monsters and walk from house to house, asking for a trick or a treat. It was called Halloween. Gulia had a brilliant idea. She would sneak out of Crumbling Manor on Halloween night, dressed up as a monster. Then she could join in the celebration with the other children. Really brilliant idea. Do lots of research before the party. Choose the perfect costume. Consult Tragedy. He's very trendy. Hmm, not 
a not a witch, maybe I should stick with being a zombie. Create a distraction so that Auntie Departed doesn't notice anything. Eureka! I'll unstitch Shadow. That way, she'll be busy putting him back together. Find a suitable basket for the treats. Get ready and go. In the village, preparations for Halloween were underway well before the big day. Pumpkins of all different shapes and sizes appeared here and there, carved with silly or spooky faces. The children added finishing touches to their scary costumes and chose the biggest possible baskets for collecting treats. Meanwhile, back at Crumbling Manor, Gulia was extremely excited. All day, every day, she talked to Tragedy about Halloween. She yammered on so much that Tragedy couldn't even take the shortest nap. Days passed and Halloween finally arrived. Gulia spent all day getting ready. Tragedy did her hair and checked that the shadows under her eyes were really, really purple. The only thing that Gulia still needed was a basket for the treats. What could she use? She could use Auntie Departed's jewelry box. She sneaked into her auntie's bedroom, found it, and dumped out all the jewelry. Now, this wasn't exactly an ordinary jewelry box. It was Uncle Misfortune's head, and it would be difficult to keep him quiet. Gulia's uncle was a real chatterbox. Uncle Misfortune loved being left to snooze on top of the dresser, and he enjoyed chatting with the photos of his younger self hanging on the wall nearby. When Gulia disturbed him, he was in a very bad mood indeed. What on earth is going on? Put my head back on right away. I'm cold. Gulia explained that she needed to borrow his head for the evening and promised that she would return him to his place on the dresser the next day. Achoo! If you come along, and more importantly, if you keep quiet for the whole evening, I will dust you for a whole year, and I'll bring you fat little worms to say thank you. Do we have a deal? asked Gulia. Uncle Misfortune, Miss, Uncle Misfortune reluctantly agreed. Finally, Gulia was ready. She sped down the stairs looking for Auntie Departed and found her sitting in the parlor, trying to stitch up Shadow. She thought his tail had come unstitched during the nightly excursion around the manor grounds, but Auntie Departed, having run out of gray thread, was stitching him up with thick, bright orange thread. At the same time, Auntie was playing a game of chess with Granddad Coffin. She was winning, much to Granddad's disappointment. Gulia, taking advantage of Auntie's distraction, casually told her that she was off for a walk. Yes, yes, of course, her Auntie replied, waving Gulia away with a flick of her hand. Gulia sped away from Crumbling Manor with tragedy and Uncle Misfortune's head. She ran along the path, out through the gates, and off down the road that led to the village, as happy as can be. Before long, Gulia came across a group of children, dressed up in monster costumes. They were going from door to door, asking, trick or treat. Gulia was feeling a little shy, but she was willing to do anything to make new friends. So she said hello and asked if she could join their group. The children looked at Gulia curiously. They were very impressed by her incredible head-shaped basket. It looked real. And the strange dog walking by her side. What's your name? asked the witch. Gulia, she muttered quietly, embarrassed. Julia, what about your dog? What's his name? asked the wolf. Tragedy. He's an albino greyhound, Gulia answered. Gulia explained that she had just moved to the village and the children welcomed her to the neighborhood. Gulia's heart swelled with happiness. She set off with her new friends as they made their way down the lane. We should sing a spooky song. 
Does anyone know any good ones? Asked the vampire. I do, replied the mummy. He started singing, and little by little, all the others started to join in. After the song ended, Gulia exclaimed, What a coincidence! Just the other day, my auntie departed was giving her grave a good cleaning. She loves to keep everything nice and tidy. The witch chuckled, Julia, you are really funny. Then all the children joined in the laughter. The children debated which of them had the scariest costume and how cool it would be to re meet a real monster. Gulia couldn't have been happier. These children weren't afraid of vampires, ghosts, or zombies. They even had a competition to see who could make the scariest face. I'm a vampire. Look at my pointy fangs, hissed Michael. I'm a witch. Look at my disgusting warts, cackled Teresa. I'm a wolf man. Look at my sharp claws, growled Johnny. Gulia, too excited to remember she was supposed to be an ordinary child, demonstrated her special scary move. Uh -oh. She tossed her head into her hand, spun it around, bounced it in the air, and finally caught it. I'm a zombie! Abracadabra! The children fell silent. Gulia froze, realizing that she had given herself away. Everyone stared. And stared. And stared. Then Johnny, the youngest child of the group, broke the silence by yelling, This is the most incredible thing in the entire universe. You're a real zombie, he shrieked. Yes. And I meant to say, my name is Gulia, not Julia, she giggled. Hooray for our friend Gulia, they all shouted, giving her a big hug. If she could have, Gulia would have blushed bright red. From that day onward, the children started visiting Crumbling Manor. Finally, Gulia could play with her very own group of friends, and she only had to be herself. In the end, even Auntie Departed was happy because Gulia asked the village children to keep her secret. They agreed and made a pact between the members of the Monster Society to make it official. They performed a wild dance under the moonlight in Crumbling Manor's garden. But reader, don't forget, it's a secret, so keep your lips sealed. If you like this story, you can read it for yourself on Epic Books. Everyone has access, and you can read all the fine print on the pages that I went over. And there's additional Halloween fun on the pages that follow this one. Just to give you a preview, take a look. I hope you enjoyed the story, everyone. Have a great Halloween. Be safe, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.